This video is about collision plate boundaries. We're going to focus on what plate movement occurs at a collision plate boundary, what tectonic processes and tectonic activity happen there, what landforms occur at a collision plate boundary, and what does a diagram of a collision plate boundary look like. The first question to focus on is what plate movement occurs at a collision plate boundary. Two continental plates move toward each other and collide. As the two plates are the same density, or weight, neither of them subduct or sink underneath the other. Instead, they push upwards into each other, and the rocks between the two tectonic plates that were previously on the ocean floor get pushed upwards. These rocks crumple, fold and fault, and they form steep, rugged mountains called fold mountains. The next thing to consider is what tectonic processes and activity happen at a collision plate boundary. Tectonic processes are actions and at a collision plate boundary the tectonic process or action is folding. This occurs when the two continental plates collide, the sediments that were on the ocean floor between the two plates get pushed upwards and crumpled. The rocks then become a series of folds with dips that we call synclines and upfolds that we called anticlines. Tectonic activity at this plate boundary includes earthquakes. As the two tectonic plates collide, the rock between them gets crumpled upwards. This force can cause vibrations in the rocks from the impact of these two plates colliding, and this leads to powerful earthquakes. There are no volcanoes at a collision plate margin, as there is no subduction and there is no gap for magma to rise up between. So just to repeat, there's only earthquakes, not any volcanic activity at a collision plate margin. The next thing to consider are what landforms are found at a collision plate boundary. There is one, and this is Fold Mountains. So you can see here that we've got three pictures of Fold Mountains. You can see in the picture here that we call them fold mountains because there are folds in the rocks. What I have just drawn on is called a syncline, so a dip. Where the rocks fold upwards, such as on the second picture, you see the rocks folding upwards, that is called an anticline. Fold mountains are typically tall, steep, rugged, and because of the high altitudes, they are usually snow-capped. In the valleys in between the folds, you usually get areas of water, so there's lakes, and they are fed by glaciers. So the only landform at collision plate boundary are fold mountains. Here we have a sequence of diagrams to summarise what happens at a collision plate margin and how this leads to the formation of fold mountains. I'll start with the sequence of diagrams here. In diagram A, you can see that you've got two tectonic plates, both continental, and there is an area of sea in between them. Rivers carry material from the land and they deposit the material in the sea. This is called a geosyncline, the area where the material is deposited. So a geosyncline is a depression in the sea where material is deposited. This causes sediment to build up on the seabed and get a layer of sediment. Convection currents cause these two tectonic plates to move towards each other. As that happens, the sediment that is deposited as layers on the bottom of the sea start to get squished and compressed and they turn into sedimentary rock. In the third diagram you can see that we've got the two plates continuing to move towards each other but the sea that was in between them has now gone so the water has evaporated as the two continental plates have collided and the sediment that was once in layers is now forced up into a series of 
anticlines and synclines, folds and folds. And this is what forms our fold mountains, such as the Himalayas. Another way of showing this is diagram two. Here we have our mantle labelled to show that it's convection currents that are causing the plates to move. We've got two clear arrows to show the direction the plates are moving in. We have got a named example of the Eurasian plate and the Indo-Australian plate. These two plates and their movement form the Himalayas. And that's what the mountain range is being represented as in the middle. So if I just label that. You can see the squiggly lines are showing that the mountains are folded. And just to make it very clear to the examiner that we know what we're talking about, we have said continental and continental plate. The last diagram that you can see here, number three, this has come from the CPD revision book. You can see that it's a lot simpler. But again, we've got the two arrows showing that they move towards each other. We've clearly got it labelled as continental plates. We've mentioned it's sedimentary rock and it's folding. So those are the key elements you need to include on a diagram of collision plate boundary. What direction are the plates moving in, shown by the arrows? You should have knowledge of about the sediments being deposited in the sea. The plates are moving towards each other. They get compressed and crumpled, forced upwards and they make mountain ranges. The two plates involved are continental. There is no volcanic activity. Here we have a example from your GCSE exam of how this question could be asked on the foundation paper. So a series of diagrams are provided and you are expected to write an appropriate sentence to support the diagram. On the higher paper you would be asked to draw the diagrams or you would be asked to write an answer for four marks. So we can see that in the first diagram, number one, we have got rivers are eroding material from the land surface and transport into the sea. Diagram two, you can see that the difference between diagram one and two is that we've got layers of sediment. So sediment is deposited on the ocean floor, layers build up over time. Between 3 and 2, spotting the difference, we have got the plates now moving towards each other and we've mentioned the idea of a collision boundary. Our layers have also got more built up. And then diagram 4 is different from diagram 3 because those layers of sediment have now been pushed upwards and crumpled forming mountains, fold mountains to be exact, with anticlines, the sticking up parts, and synclines, the downfolds or the going down parts. This completes the video on collision plate boundaries. Hopefully you found this very interesting but also made it more easier for you to understand what the actions are, the tectonic plate movement, the landforms, and how to present this in a diagram format.